Welcome, here is Interdeo TV from Stuttgart. And we'd like to welcome right now our next guest. It's Dr. Ingo Simonis. He's from the Open Geospatial Consortium OGC here. Welcome at Interdeo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation to talk to you today. Yeah, it would be great. So if you just uh, introduce OGC in a few words uh, yourself. Sure. OGC is mostly known as a standardization organization, and that's probably the focus for the last, um, let's say, 25 years out of the 30 years. This year we are celebrating 30th anniversary. But over the last five years, we have converted quite a bit into a, a community, a hub that brings the geospatial community together to solve the challenges we are all facing with integration of data, conflation of data, making machines work with each other. Yeah, and so you also have here a session um, you're um, uh, also giving here at Intergeo. It's about interoperable, interoperable climate systems to support Gen AI insights on climate and disaster resilience. So let's talk about that. What f uh, problems are you solving in that, pro in that project? Yeah, let's, let's start with the hopes many people have, right? We all see the capabilities of uh, JetGPT and the, the hope is we can just ask questions. What does yeah. climate change mean for the city of Stuttgart? And the city of Stuttgart probably has the necessary personnel to understand all the geospatial data, to integrate it and to take the right decisions from it. But there are thousands of smaller cities that do not have the same capabilities. And our task is now to understand how can we bring the power of these new large language models together with the actual data that we get from the projections, from all the sensors out there, because otherwise we have an AI that just provides answers based on probability, and we want to base it on probability plus real data, right? To make sure we have more substantial decisions, we can understand why we decided to go path A and not path B. So um, just using artificial intelligence, as you just mentioned, yeah, pro programs like ChatGPT and so on, and the integration of AI in um, technology solutions and software, this is a huge trend overall. It's a it's an incredible trend, right? And if we if we look at the ChatGPTs, I mean they used all the mostly the written material from the web, right, to learn. And now we need to bring all the data um, in addition to all these websites and reports that have been used to train ChatGPT. So the goal is really to have an ChatGPT Plus that uses the data. And the goal is uh, that if you send your request, the engine does not just look into the training material, but it goes out to the databases where all the climate projections are stored, where your sensing data is stored, where your demographic data is stored, your economic data is stored, brings it all together and then gives you a far more substantial answer to your question than that, well, compared to what you could get by just using the, uh, the normal training data set. You already mentioned the more precise sensors. We were talking about um, AI. So are there any further trends you can detect here um, at Intergeo as a showcase for innovations in the year? Well, what, what we see more and more is the semi-automated or automated integration of data, right? We have, I don't know how many drone um, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturers present here at Intergeo. And, um, but the challenge is if I do have this variety of options, right, can I just um, give a contract to one organization and be sure I can fully understand the data. I need to understand lots of details if I want to use AI. It's not that I can just use the drone um, aerial photography data. I need to understand how it was produced. I need to understand how the AI models have been trained. Otherwise, I'm on, on very shaky ground if I take my decision to invest into a multi-billion euros um, climate adaptation project and it was, the decision was built on AI data with questionable training material. I, I need to understand so much more today because so much more variety in data is available and well this is the big challenge we are, we are facing not only for AI but in general. Mm -hmm. So, um, in your view, what role does Intergeo play in uh, yeah, fostering collaboration and knowledge um, just um, among various stakeholders in the climate and disaster resilience sectors? Well, here at, Inter here at Intergeo, we see 
lots of well, officially competitors, large organizations providing software, selling data, but they all face the same challenge. They need to have a certain level of interoperability to work together. And then they will differentiate based on the quality of their tools, the look and feel, the price, all these other differentiators. But they need to have a level of interoperability to become more efficient. Otherwise, they deal with an endless number of different data formats and different data histories and provenance mechanisms. They can't handle this anymore. So they are coming to OGC now and ask us, could you please provide a standard for um, uh, auto photos, for true auto photos, for all type of information, right? And um, that's our task now, to bring the community together, agree on the right level for the standard so that the industry can then implement against it and can exchange data between the various tools. Because there's no single vendor dominating the space in a way that right, we would um, all agree on, on the formats provided by this um, organization. So standardization still is, is absolutely crucial. Thank you very much, very insightful, and thank you for your time for being here at Intergeo TV. Thank you. Thank much. you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk with you today. Thank you. Welcome.